This holiday season, you might be looking for nutritious, convenient meals to keep you energized on jam-packed days. Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal delivery service, can help you fuel up for brekkie, lunch, or dinner with chef-prepared, dietitian approved ready-to-eat meals delivered straight <laughs> to your door. They just drop them at your door, people. You'll save time and eat well. You'll stay on track with your healthy lifestyle while taking all of your holiday to-dos in stride with good meals in the tum-tum. If you're too busy with all this stuff, these meals are easy. Easy to get done. They taste great. All you've got to do is head over to factormeals.com slash expandingreality50 and use code expandingreality50 to get 50% off. That's code expandingreality50 at factormeals.com slash expandingreality50 to get 50% off. A choice right now, right now, between fear and love. It's just a run. Out of the dark night of ignorance and into the shining light of truth. Expanding reality. A population of citizens capable of critical thinking. We don't see things as they are, we see them as we are. There's a, a level of reality where everything dissolves into an ocean of energy. We empower our experience by insisting on our authenticity. That's very profound. Very profound. Expanding reality. Welcome to Expanding Reality. I am your host, Brandon Thomas, on this one of freaking awesome episode guys we have todd armstrong he comes through he is the host of uh the god Godcast, the goodness over darkness podcast and uh he comes in and just wreck shop on the book of enoch and how dope this thing is uh he does a wonderful breakdown with some incredible analogies guys you'll really really enjoy the in-depth research that he has done and so to find more on him check the show notes uh for all the ways to find him his youtube channel is phenomenal his show is incredible uh, i've been on it he is a wonderful host so i can vouch for him personally and his dopeness so uh, without any further ado, guys, let's get right to this episode with Todd Armstrong. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcoming to the show, good friend of mine, uh, Todd Armstrong. Todd, how are you, dude? I am doing excellent. Thank you so much for having me on the show. I'm honored to be on Expanding Reality. Well, we are honored to have you, man. You do an awesome show. I was uh, grateful enough to be a guest on your show, Godcast, Goodness Over Darkness podcast, which will be linked in the show notes, guys. So make sure that you go check him out. Todd does an awesome job. You ask the right questions. You do great deep dives on some really interesting stuff. So before we get cracking into this, because you got something really special for us, uh, just tell us a little bit about you, man, and then we'll get rolling. So six years ago, I was in prison for burglarizing pharmacies. I was a drug addict for over a decade, and then my 90th day in jail, I prayed to God for the first time in over a decade, and I, uh, ever since then, I've been on a hot tear on changing my life around. I mean, it was completely, I'm not close to the same person I was that uh, that's six and a half years ago at this point. So, you know, it's all it took was me praying to God and wanted to be better every day. And what happened? I grew psychic abilities and I started learning everything, uh, of all the conspiracies. And then between my researching and so I started meditating every day for 30 minutes a day. And that really, uh, got me spiritually in tune. So once I did that, studying the um, conspiracy theories, then I realized that there was so much more to the world and then I needed an outlet. So I created the podcast and ever since then, as you said, I've been talking to so many people who do such great work that it helps boost, you know, I'm doing my own research on different things, but then talking to other people and getting firsthand information from them and their research, it really helps me solidify things, especially with my psychic abilities. My third eye is always going. So when people are telling me stories, I'm seeing their memory as they see it in their mind. So it's very cool and it's very, it's very helpful and it really helps me discern, you know, the truth from someone who may be trying to lie to me. 
And you've got like this dope ass underdog story about the, how crazy your life was and all based on your decisions, which I like that you're, you know, man yeah. enough to take responsibility for that. And, uh, but welcome to the other side, man. That's huge. That's a massive hero's tale that you've, you've gone on your hero's journey. Uh, so let's give a hot tear through your idea of what God is. Um, so whenever you were praying in prison, what did your idea of who you were praying to? Did you think you were praying to the dude who hung out with Jesus or were you uh, praying to one God in particular? Or did you just reach out? a desperate attempt to find a higher power yeah so at that time it was just god you know something larger than myself that i knew so when i rebelled against god well i was like 14 or so and i was like there's no god you know like all that's all nonsense uh it wasn't really atheistic but it wasn't really i don't really know how to explain it you know i was just like i don't need anything like i'm I can do everything myself type of deal. So when I prayed, I was just like, all right, like I give up, you know, it's not on me. And and then from there, my image of God has changed as I've learned more information. So it's like uh, going around the mountain as you go, you know, you, you circle around in order to get to the top. So you spiral back around to where you once were, but with more understanding. Uh, and it's the old... Uh, when you join karate and you're a yellow belt, you know, a punch is more than a punch and a kick's more than a kick, but then you become a black belt and you're like, yeah, a punch is a punch and a kick's a kick. <laughs> so you got to spiral back around in order to understand it more so. So what it transferred into was like the universe and synchronicity. I started seeing that was God. And then I started realizing everything was God. Uh, that, well, not everything is God, but that everything is under God's control and that everything in my life was so purposeful that one moment led to the next and led to the next. And if I didn't do this one thing six months ago that then spawned off and jumped to this spot right here, then it wouldn't be the same and, and so on and so forth. And then what I've recently come to realize through an injury and having literal demons chase out of my chakras was that Jesus is actually what the image of God actually is. So like we have this, and I, I'm not a Christian, I, you know, I, I'm not into religion at all. And I learned all this stuff through psychedelics and meditation and, and research and really seeing other people's, as I said, with my third eye, I see other people's visions. So how I, it was just, you know, all from God showing me in a certain way how things go, that there's an image. And I had clouds come to me uh, one day in 2020 when we were locked down. And I had this thought to look up and take a picture of the clouds. And I did. And the pictures are on my website. And you can see it. It's Jesus right in my clouds. And I talked to other people. I've seen them in a psychedelic trip. And I've talked to other people who are in touch with Jesus. And some people say he's an avatar, uh, which he, he'll come to you that way if that's the only way that you'll accept him in order for you to then see that he's actually real, you know, because a lot of people are under the impression it was a fake thing that maybe he didn't exist at all. So he'll come to you however you accept it. But then it gets to a point that over, you know, just as you grow in progress, you start to see more and more truth and things uh, fade away from you. So Howdy McCoskey said a great thing on Tinfoil Hat. He said that you can't really know the truth because there's so many possibilities, but you can gather all the possibilities. And when things start linking up, you can let go of the lies. So it's not really that you're either, ever really gaining the truth, but you're let going of the lies. And that's what really helped me because I was in, in of the mind that this is a simulation, the hero's journey, as you were saying, I have my own hero's journey. And if it was a hero's journey, then who would be the ultimate hero? Jesus. Uh, and it's encoded in the NPCs by, they're always saying, you know, Jesus is coming back, Jesus saves and all that. Like, that's one way to look at it. And then there was just so many other ways that were revealed to me. And I was like, wow, every way I tried to debunk uh, Jesus as God, uh, I, I couldn't do it. It's just like the flat earthers. They say they they tried debunking flat earth and then they they couldn't do it. So they become flat earthers. Like I tried debunking Jesus as God and couldn't do it. 
The, the whole thing is fascinating to me, how people perceive different entities that then guide them in a way that's important to them. Do you, do you think that there are separate beings that add up to a whole, um, or do you think that it's one expression of the whole, but it just presents itself to you in that way because it's more palatable, or it's something like you said, you were looking to disprove it. And that is interesting, the correlation between the see, the search of disproving something, but then end up completely believing in it. There are people who do this with like the JFK assassination, aliens, flat earth, as you said, and uh, it, especially spiritually as well. Now, do you think that, like I said, do you, do you think that they're all split up of one thing or do you think that they're legit independent entities? So I think that God, so if we, we have to look at ourselves as a, the cells of God, you know, the same way we have cells. So we are that to God. So yes, we have livers and a heart, you know, we have all these different organs in us that are larger than the cells that the cells make up. But then also those organs are then part of a, a larger system and those systems are part of a larger body. So it does go up and scale that way. So yeah, there are other beings that God created in order for them to then create us, you know, so maybe the Anunnaki story of them creating humanity is a legit thing. And they may think that they're God, but they fail to recognize that they too were created and they were created with the purpose of creating us. It wasn't actually their free will decision to create us. That was what they were designed to do. But the difference is they walked with Adam and Eve and made Adam and Eve believe that they were God, whereas God who created them didn't walk with them. He just They just popped into existence and they thought, oh, I am God. Uh, a, a lot of people will say that. They'll say, oh, no, nothing created God, that God just is. And it's like, well, no, it couldn't be, you know, something, something had to create something, you know, and that scale may be so large that we can't ever comprehend it, but there's something created something always. This is exactly how I view it. And I love your analogy about the body parts, because that's the best way that I've heard it described as far as the relationship to higher beings into this hierarchy. It's not better than it's just different than in a larger way. And I like the way that you just presented it, dude. That's that's brilliant, man. Thank you. So yeah, uh, you're welcome. set us up for your presentation thing, dude, and let's get cracking on that, man. I'm really excited to see it. All right. So I'm going to share the screen here. Share the shit out of that. All right. So let's see. All right. So we got the Book of Enoch, uh, and I call it an in-depth look at the fallen angels, end time prophecies, and the Son of Man. Now, it's interesting. We won't get to the Son of Man part because uh, there's so much to it and we don't have enough time for it. But I spent 40 minutes on, so I have a three part series of this on my YouTube channel. And the third episodes, the first 40 minutes are spent on just how many the Son of Man references there actually are in the book of Enoch. So there, this, and this is written before Genesis. So this was an Enoch, as I'll get into, was much older than anything else. I think much of what is in the Bible comes from the book of Enoch. So this is like its own Bible in itself in the way it explains things dramatically. And there uh, is reference to it in the actual Bible in Jude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll get in that in this as well. And, you know, fallen angels, the more that I research it, the fallen angels really, they explain all of the aliens. Uh, everything can be explained by the book of Enoch that we call cryptids and, and all that. It'll, it's all explained by the fallen angels. That's so cool. Yeah, it really is. So there's two, there's actually two Enochs and uh, the first Enoch was the son of Cain and he was the third generation from Adam. He had a city be built in his name and he's the one that's credited for Gary Wayne credits him for being like the father of giving us evil things that we weren't supposed to have metals and jewelry and makeup and all that type of stuff. It, the book of Enoch says it comes from the fallen angels, Azazel and uh, Sam Yaza and all them. But Gary Wayne said that they actually were in kind of communication with the other Enoch. So a lot of people uh, that come across the other Enoch think that they're the same person, but they're not. So the Enoch that we're going to focus on is the son of Jared. He was the seventh generation from Adam. He was born 1,000 years before the flood. He was Noah's uh, great-grandfather. He walked with God, and he lived 365 years. He never died. Instead, he was transformed into Archangel Metatron. So he was raptured, and he was turned into Archangel Metatron. Easily so the then, coolest name. 
Yeah, it Easily. really is a cool name. Archangel uh, Metatron? Come on, dude. He's the number one archangel in uh, New Age well, he uh, should be. stuff. <laughs> he should be. That's a dope name. It is. And when I found out it, Enoch is Metatron, I, that really blew my mind. Uh, so uh, there's th- three books of Enoch. So the, uh, we're going to focus on one Enoch today because that that's the one that really gets it all. Two Enoch is kind of the same as one Enoch, a little bit different, focuses a little more in the calendar type of stuff. Uh, but you can't, it's corrupted, you know, they don't know when exactly it it was from. And three Enoch was from a uh, uh, rabbi, Rabbi Ishmael, who was taken to heaven and spoke directly with Metatron. And that's how we know that Enoch is Metatron, because he revealed it to him. He showed himself to this rabbi. All right, so Metatron, uh, he had been the Hebrew prophet Enoch, became an ascended master. Uh, in Genesis 5:24, we learn that Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him, which means he was raptured. Uh, according to just real quick, uh, what is walked with God? So, to me, it it means that he went up into heaven and was directly with God, as is referred to in the Book of Enoch as the Lord of Spirits. So the way that I see that is as i said we're all cells of god well all of us have one cell that is complete wisdom is nothing but wisdom so if you take that one cell of wisdom from every collective person then that will create what the lord of spirits is that's how i say it cool god that's a great analogy okay thank you for clearing that up oh yeah uh so according to uh gershom shalom the hebrew mystic and scholar the prophet the prophet Enoch's flesh was turned to flame, his veins to fire, his eyelashes to flashes of lightning, his eyeballs to flaming torches. He whom God placed on a throne next to the throne of glory received after this heavenly transformation the name Metatron. So what that means to me is any psychics that are familiar with the astral world, that see the blueprint world, this is exactly what they they were seeing they were seeing enoch go from a flesh and blood being to an astral being right in front of their face and it was like uh the program was like coming over him or something and as it did his eyebrows changed to flame and, and so on and so forth just but it's just metal hit. just metal music just <laughs> you know as this is all going down yeah. and it's just like rocks floating and he's just turning into this Met- metatron thing that is so cool dude okay yeah, could you imagine that's like yeah. uh dragon ball z like a goku or something like leveling up so cool yeah yeah so then uh in this way archangel metatron is one of the most powerful archangels in the new age uh because he directly represents our capacity for ascension and our ability to access spiritual power because he's the first one that ascended uh, you know he was raptured and he now distributes the power to all of us so there's other books mentioned in the bible and i want to touch on this for any christians out there that may not uh, be familiar with that you know on the screen here if you guys are watching the video there's 13 different books i'm not going to name them all but there's 13 other books other than the book of enoch that are all mentioned in the bible and you should uh, check up on some of these all right, so the book of Enoch is referenced by the Bible. It's directly quoted in several New Testament books, Jude, Peter, Luke, Matthew, and John. There's direct parallels with the book of Genesis. Jesus often spoke using direct quotes from the book of Enoch, and uh, the book of Enoch and the Bible both use the phrases the Son of Man, the Elect One, the Righteous One, and the Lord of Spirits. And then I'm not going to go through these either, but there's a bunch of quotes on the screen here from Jesus and Enoch, and they show how they line up. Like I'll give one example and uh, two here for Jesus. The Father judges no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son, which is John 5.22. And then Enoch, uh, two right here, it says, And he sat on the throne of his glory, and the sum of judgment was given to the Son of Man which is in Enoch 69, 27. So you can see how Jesus was saying all the same things as, not maybe not all, but was saying a lot of the same things as Enoch directly said. And then he got a part two here, you know, so you guys can pause and go through that yourselves. And there's even Tartaria connections in here. I've been studying Tartaria and in Enoch 1, 6, it says, and the high mountains will be shaken and the high hill shall be made low and shall melt like wax before the flame. Now, what's that sound like? That sounds like a mud flood to me. Yeah. And 
and we have the Great Plains in the middle of the United States, you know, was were they mountains and high hills that that melted because they weren't supposed to be? And also another connection is Uriel, who's one of the holy angels. Uh, it's in Enoch 20, chapter or chapter 20, verse 2. It says, Uriel, one of the holy angels, who was over the world and over Tartarus. And Tartarus in the Bible is hell. So Uriel watches over hell, which Tartarus is actually in, uh, in Asia, in like the Middle East, Asia, right over there. So it's very interesting because that's where Tartaria is on all of our maps. Yep. You do see globes with that on there. That's crazy. Yeah, I have, a, I have a couple myself. Do you really? You have globes that say Tatari on them? Oh, Damn, yeah. Damn, that's cool. Okay, awesome, dude. Uh, so this whole thing about the correlations between Enoch and Jesus, like Genoch, Jesus is Enoch, Enoch is Jesus, you know, the whole uh, Finkel-Einhorn thing. But also on this, you have uh, correlations between Jesus and Ra. Um, I know the Egyptian Book of the Dead walks through a ton of stuff that the Bible does as well. And then you've got uh, things like uh, Osiris uh, being one of these as well, all of them having to do with the, you know, virgin birth, dead for three days, resurrected. All of those things are strong correlates, and which make a lot of people point to, and I know you've had Micah Dank on your show, uh, a lot of people point to, um, you know, that it was just a parable, like it was just a story. Some people, though, believe that it's a little bit more literal, but I like your breakdown in the the correlation between Jesus and Enoch and the way that you you did a great job on that, man. So it's oh, just another you. one of those in the list of, you know, it's another uh, avenue of evidence that you can follow for this. Idea. Right. I, I think Jesus was very uh, educated on the book of Enoch. It was, it's clear once you read the Bible that they were all reading the book of Enoch. It was uh, heavily influenced the Bible in so many different ways that they were all very familiar with it. So I, I'm not saying Jesus and Enoch were the same person. In fact, Enoch gets into here, uh, as you'll see at one part that they're talking about Jesus the entire time. When they say the son of man, everything has always led up to Jesus being, uh, and it was always known that there was going to be one who would, whose name would ring a bell in a different way than the others. And like you said, Osiris and Mithra and Dionysius, they have similar types of traits, but they're also, uh, they were fallen angels who were, were to this effect. I don't want to say they're directly fallen angels, but that it was not the same. It was uh, deception as we were told that deception would come in the name of Jesus many times and none of them would be true and there would only be one and you would understand it once you saw him as uh, so th there is a bit of a difference and with the astro theology I I think that it's more likely that it was it was literal that these things are all very literal they're all very parable and metaphorical and can be used in very many different ways I do that myself with many of the the things it helps us understand them on a personal level but uh, as far as the astro theology I think it's more likely that the stars were just like a blank slate to humanity and humanity said oh this looks like this shape and once they started connecting the dots that it was out in the collective consciousness so now everyone could see it that way because it's already been put in uh in their face like once you see the big dipper like someone outlined it for you you look up and you see the, you're like oh yeah that's the big dipper yeah you can't, you can't unsee, unsee it. it you're right, right right yeah so i think that's the astro theology and the fallen angels teach the astro theology or astrology anyway there you go and all the correlations to like the 12 disciples you know and all, all the stuff like moves around and the way that and micah does a great job on breaking that idea down right. but it's very interesting you know and of course the you know uh human beings were the ones that created the the constellations and it you know and i asked this question of uh, astrologers and stuff we're on a different planet would we have like different astrology right i mean you would right. think so right but uh, no, I, I love the, this idea is fascinating to me, especially why certain things were chosen to be part of a certain ideology and then other things cast aside. I think that those, and then, but people like you that find the reasons why and can delineate between the two and find the correlations. I have mad respect for that, dude. You, you're a hell of a researcher when it comes to this stuff. So please uh, continue. Oh, well, thank you. All right. So we're going to get into the book of watchers. So a lot of people, they only focus on one chapter, chapter 15, which talks about uh the giants but i want to talk i like the fallen angels because that really helps me understand everything so 
So the way that I have it listed out, we're going to go through the fallen angels real quick. Uh, so this, they happened during the time of Enoch's father, Jared. So it wasn't that they were always here, that it was the sixth generation of humanity is when they decided to come down. And you can see all their names on the screen here, you know, Sam Yaza uh, and Azazel are probably only the only ones people will actually know on there, but you can read them all if you like. Uh, they taught humanity charms and enchantments, the cutting of roots, which I say is psychedelics, and made them acquainted with plants. So the the definition of acquainted me means to make someone aware or familiar with. And so the way that I see it is that uh, ayahuasca and iboga are both uh, claimed to have started that the plants told these people how to do it. But after reading the Book of Enoch and understanding psychedelics the way that I do, you know, I've done many trips. Uh, of, I've done ayahuasca. I've done mushrooms. I've done LSD. I've done uh, many things. Uh, and what I understand now by doing them is that it wasn't the plants talking to the people. It was the fallen angels just couldn't be perceived at all except through audible. And what they did was they told the humans – how to mix the plants together so then they could see them and interact with them. So they started off as pure consciousness, the fallen angels, because they hadn't sinned yet, really. They were the, the stars. They were literally the watchers. They were tasked with watching the earth. That's all they were supposed to do as the sun and the, the moon and the stars that are still in our sky today. They just watch us. So they're pure consciousness. So that when they came down, uh, they somehow were like a, a ghost you know, maybe a, a one planet or one star, maybe many, many beings the size of us. You know, that's one thing that I, I'm not really sure of is the size of consciousness because it would be on such a different scale. But it, but uh, so they got them to eat the psychedelics, uh, which is called root cuttings. From there, they started mixing their consciousness with the consciousness of humans and bore out giants who had vast amounts of consciousness with their larger vessels. So what this really means to me, then this, they materialize by becoming the Nephilim or Neanderthals, as we may know them. And the, there's Raphaim. There's many different names for them. The giants. Oh, yeah, yeah, the giants, you know, hundreds of feet tall, uh, yeah. thousands of feet tall, I think even. Uh, you can see this all around the earth, and I have pictures here I'll show in a little bit that's, uh, that look like human remains that are like rocks or islands, those types of things. And so right here, what we're saying with the, they started mixing their consciousness with the consciousness of humans. Gary Wayne really broke it down on the round table I held a couple weeks ago about the fallen angels, Nephilim secret societies and alien abductions, where he said there's an avatar and an avatar relationship. So the avatar would be the human and the avatar would be the consciousness. So the way that he started describing it, I would see that it's a human with like something coming out of them, that the human's walking around and it's the quote unquote higher self that is then walking with uh, this other being. So it's the avatar, avatar relationship is that that's how they started mixing and becoming giant. So it was pretty much possession when uh, it says that once they consumed all the humanity as much as they could. And once they couldn't anymore, then they bore out giants because they would consume each person like it would be a lustful nature. And, you know, you, you start humping everything because you're all lust. And then it'd be a gluttony nature. You start eating everything. You know, all these types of lower aspects is this is how they got into us. And it started through psychedelics, uh, which then opened them up to possession, which then made them to a point where they were completely controlled. And I like to use the analogy of like a heroin addict. If you're to take a heroin addict and he takes uh, of a male and then he has a girlfriend and then she starts doing heroin. Now who's actually in control? It's the heroin that's controlling the relationship. And now you're, the heroin is sending them out to mingle with other people who may come into the heroin. You know, it's that type of relationship. So do you think that if we'd never done psychedelics that we would never have had demonic possession, therefore never have had sin in the first place? Uh, I don't know about sin. I'm not sure. But I, yeah, I don't think that there would be... I don't think, yeah, because the demons are the Nephilim spirits. So when the Nephilim die, they became demons. And uh, because they're not allowed in heaven, because they were born here, they have to stay here. Uh, so... 
Yes, to answer your question. So that's cra- that so that by us taking psychedelics which thin the veil in some way, right? Then that is what allowed entities to come here and possess us and basically hijack our entire opportunity to make a utopia here. Yeah, so basically they could talk to us but we we couldn't see them at all. Like they would be completely invisible, completely we we would be like, who's saying that? You know, it would just be like a dog barking, uh, in, or a dog whistle. I mean, to a dog, you know, it like, like they hear it, but they don't know where it's coming from. That's how it would be. It's interesting that the, I mean, of because yes, I have those same experiences, and and you do find that it does thin thin a veil. You do find that maybe reality is really that way or something, and that it it, it actually perturbs the filter in a way to where you can perceive it, and you do have contact in some instances with what's perceivably higher entity beings right and so but it's just interesting the idea that had we never embarked on psychedelic journeys in 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 our ancient past that we wouldn't have invited this kind of possession of our like this hijacking through like a portal of a thinned veil of us experimenting with psychedelics or the different plants around here it's also interesting to what you said at the beginning about where he taught us about the root right which would be psychedelics in this example and he taught us how to do that to connect with them but mm-hmm. didn't think to either maybe grow another plant that would i don't know block possession you know it could be like an easy <laughs> thing right it's just another herb that you add to it and you're like set up uh, or maybe warn everybody about that it would that would be a possibility it's just interesting because then at that point you say so who really was the higher entity that gave them this information in the first place was he a representative of these nephilim who would eventually come in and hijack us and do this as like a trojan horse kind of a thing and go all right we got all these fertile souls all i had to do is tell them to take this psychedelic plant they could see me but that's our way in boys you know what i mean yeah yeah that's what the fallen angels because they knew this and uh, you know god gives us free will to do whatever so so, like you were saying, maybe maybe there is some kind of uh, an- anecdotal plant uh, that that we don't know about. Uh, well, maybe someone knows about it and has hidden it, or you know, something to that effect. It's in the Vatican, dude. <laughs> it could be, uh, but it, yeah, the fallen angels. Uh, and I want to say because I'm not against uh, psychedelics now, and I think now is a different day and age, and our pineal glands are so closed that it helps to use the psychedelics in order to break us free of the matrix now. So now they're, they've become kind of not exactly a 100% necessity, but they've become a necessity for some. They're pretty damn useful. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. But you do have to be careful with them. I will say that. So humanity was on its own ascension course where it was to learn everything it needed as its consciousness evolved. But the fallen came down here and advanced the humans too quickly. And then this became a prison planet for those who had known the secrets of heaven, for they longed to be in the heavens and didn't understand why they weren't allowed in heaven. So this is basically just saying that uh, the way I like to use Jordan Maxwell, he's been awake for 60 years and he's had all this information and couldn't do anything. And it became like a prison for him that he knew way too much. So that's how I relate this to humanity because they're like, oh, well, why can't we just go back to heaven? You know, we're done here. And it's like, you can't, you got to learn lessons, but they wouldn't have known that they had lessons to learn if the fallen didn't come down and start telling them, oh, you guys are in hell. You know, you don't have to, you can do this and that, blah, 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 whatever. Uh, So it was the fallen who came down and told us, and then we couldn't grow discernment from there. And then we just believed everything we were told, where we fell into the trap of duality and so on and so forth, that, that this isn't actually duality. You know, when you are born and you have no experience, the first thing you may experience is getting your butt smacked. And you feel pain and you terror and you start crying and you didn't need to know joy in order to understand what you're feeling. And when also when you're born, the light is way too bright and and you got to close your eyes because it's too bright because you know it's light. You didn't need to know darkness in order to know it's light. So, yeah, to be fair, though, in that analogy, you're right on the first one. But in that second one, you've been in a dark, you know, bubble. For the but past not nine as months. But you're right. You're right. Well, you're right. well, they don't have human eyes there though. They have a third eye that they are using in there. So once they open their eyes, their two eyes is the first time is when they're born. So they didn't know darkness with these eyes ever. Fair enough. 
And if you were to think about it, because I'll give you that because it is a little confusing, but if you think about plants and animals uh, and humans, if we didn't have darkness, then we would grow much more. If we only had sunlight, then there would be only growth. There, there wouldn't be a time like if... Yeah, like people who grow plants indoors, they put the lights on for 24 hours because it doubles your yield. Yeah, yeah. I know people that do this with chickens too. I disagree with it on a fundamental level, but people do yeah, it with their chickens. Up. Yeah, I say let them go through their cycles. You know, it's natural. Yeah. Let them do their thing. Anyway. Right. If, yeah. So if it was a natural cycle I, and we only had light, you know, we wouldn't be perplexed. We would know the light is light, you know. It, so when they tell us it's duality, it's only duality now because they've created it that way, which again is why uh, they hate Jesus because he's the one that said, no, I'm not going to just meditate and, and be higher ascending. I'm going to actively stop you from doing evil. So there's a difference in him versus Buddha uh, and and Krishna and so on and so forth, where the, as they were like, okay, everything is because God is everything and it's okay to have balance. And Jesus is like, no, no balance. We're just doing light. <laughs> They're all passive and he's like super yeah. actionable. He's like kicking down people's doors. Exactly. I love you. It's great. Yeah. 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 So like the John Cena of you know, <laughs> Messiah's. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why they hate him uh, because he's the only one that'll do that. So, so back to this, uh, there's seven main transgressors, which correlate to the seven planets that revolve around our sun because I don't include earth as a planet. Uh, and they're locked in forever, as Uriel describes in chapter 21, verse 6, where he says, These are the number of the stars of heaven which have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and are bound here till 10,000 years. The time entailed by their sins are consummated. That's a, a number, you know, it's because it was uh, 10,000 B.C., 10,000 years before Jesus came is when uh, the Ice Age ended, or, uh, approximately 10,000 years. And... You know, it's just a very uh, interesting number right there. But when they say the the chains, as I look at it as the planets being in their um, Orbits, their orbit. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the orbit, it's the chains that they're held into. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So th then we got some more here. And these are some good, uh, some good excerpts that I'm going to read real quick. So here we have verse 9. Uh, I don't know what chapter this is. I didn't write it down. But then Uriel answered me, one of the holy angels who was with me, and said unto me, Enoch, why hast thou such fear and affright? And I answered, because of this fearful place and because of the spectacle of pain. And he said unto me, this place is the prison of the angels, and here they will be imprisoned forever. So I think that's actually a continuation of the uh, the last one where I said the seven main transgressors. Right. All right. So then we have... Uh, Enoch 23, 4, then Raguel, one of the holy angels who was with me, answered me and said unto me, this course of fire, which thou hast seen is the fire in the West, which persecutes all the luminaries of heaven. So this is describing hell at the end times and is saying that the fallen angels are the luminaries. It's saying they're being persecuted by uh, the sun of the fire of the West, which the sun sets in the West. So, like this is inception and the deeper you go into inception, the deeper into the dream, the slower time moves, right? So there, wherever they are on a higher dimensional scale, one day for them is like one, probably like 1000 years for us. So when the, their sun sets, that's like a thousand years of sun setting for us. So it's, a, so you have to keep that in mind when they say one day or, or something like that. Yeah, and how they always say, like, near, and we're coming soon, and it's like, well, soon to them could be three days, which is really like 3,000 years or something like that, right? So it's, yeah, exactly. You know, and that's why people soon, from our perspective, is very, very different. Right. All right, and then Enoch 46.7, he says, and these are they who judge the stars of heaven and raise their hands against the Most High and tread upon the earth and dwell upon it, and all their deeds manifest unrighteousness, and their power rests upon their riches, and their faith is in the gods which they have made with their hands, and they deny the name of the Lord of Spirits. Again, this is directly saying the stars of heaven are the fallen angels and that they create money and things with their hands that they then worship. 
you know, it, whatever that they create and they say, this is a God. I, you know, I have a God of the water and a God of the sky and a God of this and that. And it's like, what well, you guys just made that. You just said that. And it's not an actual real thing. <laughs> yeah, they're like a bunch of goobers. It's like only yeah. because they're just one dimension higher than us, but we're already way smarter than them. You know, that's that sucks, mm-hmm. dude. Because they have all this control <laughs> or all this power, rather. That's just wild. Right. But they're goobers. Right. Uh, and that so Enoch 64 1 and 2 he says and other forms I saw hidden in that place I heard the voice of the angel saying these are the angels who descended to the earth and revealed what was hidden to the children of men and seduced the children of men into committing sin this is when Enoch sees one of the hell realms and it's explained why it exists and who it is for so that's what a lot of this is going into now this is a vision that Enoch had that I'm about to set up with these two so it's very important that we understand uh, who Baal, Baal, or however you want to say, B A, yeah, yeah Baal, and he represents the ox or the bull, right? It's very important that we understand that when we read this. So 89 1, and again, I saw with mine eyes as I slept, and I saw the heaven above, and behold, a star fell from heaven, and it arose and ate and pastured amongst those oxen. And then in 89.3, and again, I saw in the vision and looked towards the heaven and behold, I saw many stars descend and cast themselves down from heaven to that first star and they became bulls amongst those cattle and pastured with them. So this is, they're saying that the stars, literally the stars were the fallen angels, that the stars fell from heaven and came down here. And this is all the ball worship, the bull worship, the, the cow worship. This because the fallen angels pretended to be amongst them, the cattle. Yeah, like aliens would come down and then shapeshift uh, Skinwalker Ranch style into cows and blend in. Sure. Exactly, yeah. Infiltration. Yeah, that's, that's Maybe right, that's, that's all how... this is. It's just a damn alien invasion. Oh, yeah, yeah. The fallen angels, yeah. Or that's what it is, exactly. <laughs> that <matter. laughs> Uh, so then we have uh, Enoch chapter 6, verses 3 to 6. And Sam Yaza, who was their leader, said unto them, I fear ye will not indeed agree to do this deed, and I alone shall have to pay the penalty of a great sin. And they all answered him and said, Let us all swear an oath and all bind ourselves by mutual imprecations not to abandon this plan, but to do this thing. Then swear they all together and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it. And they were all in all 200 who descended in the days of Jared, who's Enoch's father, on the summit of Mount Hermon. And they called it Mount Hermon because they had sworn and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it, which is what secret societies do. You know, Trump, Trump and Kamala Harris aren't on the same team, but they both swore the same oath. So they both aren't going to turn each other in. You know, that's, that's just the truth. They're all they're Damn. all part of it, even though there's they may seem separate. They're not. Politics. They all swore that oath. Yep. Yarp. And in that passage, it's discussing the oaths that were taken correlates to secret societies. And Jesus mentions many times in the Bibles that you shouldn't take oaths of secrecy and you should actually be very truthful in what you say. So, you know, this is just what they're doing right now. And then the Nephilim and Neanderthals, I mentioned them, you know, neither of them can reproduce. They're way larger than humans and they lived in the same time period. So, you know, what science tells us uh, when the Neanderthals lived, that's when the Nephilim uh, were actually living. So, you know, it, it works out that way. And they were similar to humans, but each of these were similar larger humans and they were both known to be violent and aggressive so you know just some similarities there and then we have all the chapters here i have breaking down uh so if you guys want to pause it and go back and look at them but here i got some rock formations to show you guys so maybe i'll go to the previous slide uh so chapter seven it says uh, and all the others together with them took unto themselves wives and chose one for each for himself and they began to go unto them and defile themselves with them. And they, ca- they taught them charms and enchantments and the cuttings of roots. 
and acquainted with the plants and they became pregnant and they bear great giants whose height was 3000 L's. So an L is 18 inches where a cubit it's also known as is 18 inches. So instead of 12 inches the way we have, so 3000 L's would be 4,500 feet tall. Dang. So yeah, so that's how large we're talking at some point that there were ones. And now we're going to go into, I mean, you can see this looks like two men or two beings about to kiss and these are these are rock formations and they're giant cliffs that looks like they were killed right as and frozen in time like something really hot came and burned them up like you know maybe the comet that killed the dinosaurs mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you know we have that one then we have this i mean look at the, the See, one on the left crazy yeah did you I get mean, these from that sibs of insta thing no, what's what, that? Did I tell you about this, or have you not seen this? No, I don't okay, know. I'll, what this I'll is. send it to you. It's an Instagram page called Sibs of Insta, S I B S, all lowercase. Okay, whatever. but it has this is all it is. But they'll like trace them out and shit. It's fascinating, dude. Anyway, keep going. This is bad. Yeah, I'll yeah send you it can. To you. Okay, you can, you can see the eyes right here, the nose, the mouth. I mean, these guys are obvious. Then this one over here. I mean, and they all have different shaped faces. Now this guy right here, I was connecting with this uh, in a third eye type of way that the the soul of this being was still in here and you can see these are all trees this is like a huge a uh, huge cliff i mean i don't even know how big this would be and this is just the face and i was connecting with this guy right here and he was just laying there and then i connected with him and told him if he accepted jesus as lord and savior he would break free and he and he did -uh. he, i swear That's awesome. I, I do it with the like this type of it's thing so with cool are you able to energies communicate all the time with this dude? he's not there any longer he went up to heaven okay i would so ask the way i so do it i don't questions. the way i it's like thoughts just uh it's all telepathic it's just like i'm thinking it and i'm connected with him because i'm seeing him and then i'm i so as being a reflector i take on the feelings of whoever i'm connecting with and so I just like wear it as myself, kind of. It'd be cool to have like a guest like that on your show, dude. Interview this dude and ask him <laughs> about all of this stuff, but do it through the way that you're able to communicate with him, man. That would be fascinating, dude. Yeah, well, it's weird connecting with him, especially I could feel all the trees on his face and it made me feel my face and it was very strange. It actually made me feel ill Damn. because I could feel like all my little pores could each have the capability of growing their own trees and it was, uh, it, it didn't make me feel well. No, but this is a fascinating picture, man. Yes, it, yeah, it is. Uh, and then you look at let sleeping giants lie. So, you know, this is like a chest, the neck. And the mouth and the nose, you know, this is, it's all over our planet. Then here you have a dog and a snake. I mean, this shit's just, it's crazy. And this is a cat. I mean, you got the ears, the eyes, like there were huge beings all over this place. And if you ever seen, uh, no, what's it called? Uh, planet no no trees on flat earth or something like that it's on youtube where she talks about the mesas that are all around yes. the world yes and how they were just tree trunks like yeah. uh like huge like devil's tower in wyoming i love yep. that shit dude i love yeah. that shit yeah i think it's right i mean and look yeah, here's an elephant. elephant rock yeah it's crazy and the man. whole island if you when you see another picture of that it looks like the whole damn body like the whole island yeah, i'm it's sure it island. was yeah yeah, yeah. when Mimi and I went to the Georgia Guidestones, it's the, the marble capital of the world. And, you know, there's what would be marble that got flash frozen, you know, what would make it marble? I don't know. But when we were hiking in the woods, I took a picture of this. It looked like a frog and a turtle, both there together, these huge rocks. And I mean, it's very obvious when you look at it, it looked like a frog was on top of a turtle's back and Mimi standing next to it. I, I should have <laughs> included it, but that's awesome. I mean, no, we'll link yeah. it. Yeah. Go check his uh, Instagram out guys. We'll link it. Yeah. yeah and it's on my website too, emmanuelkingman.com. Perfect. All down yeah, so, in the show notes. Go check it out. Yeah. So these, like I said, you guys can go watch my breakdown of all of that stuff. Uh, each individual chapter. Uh, so here we have God and Enoch address the fallen. I'm not going to go into that today, but it's uh, important to 
uh, listen to or at least read this stuff and understand you know what was being said from god and enoch to the fallen all right let's see all right so then we get to the angels and the different types so you got the the names url so the way that i always say it is il because l means god that's what it ends in so url raphael raguel or raguel michael sarajael gabriel remiel zotiel and fanuel so they're all mentioned in the book of enoch and and the different types you have the ophanim the seraphim and the cherubim so there are different types of angels so the seraphim are the serpent like beings that uh china has the uh chinese dragons Mm -hmm. the the eastern that's the seraphim that's exactly what they look like the cherubim are the beings that have four faces the face of a man in the front the face of a ox the face of an eagle and the face of a lion so that's the cherubim and i forget what the ophanim i think this the ophanim are the eyes within eyes or the wheels upon wheels oh yeah yeah, yeah. like ezekiel's wheel yes so yeah we got some more chapters in here you guys can look at all these to find out about the angels and now enoch journeys through heaven earth and sheol i'm going to skip over this as well but you know this is really cool enoch's trips over the entire earth and it he knows so the book of enoch is still canonical or is that how you say it canonized in uh, in ethiopia and somewhere in here he mentions going over a river uh and it's like how could he pick out that one river it's because he's from there and it turns out that's the river right next to ethiopia i forget what it is off the top of my head but uh oh wait let me go back is it one of those Tib- tibris or euphrates no i forget i forget it's i forget what it is i might have it in here actually um, it's okay. river near ethiopia you guys write it in submit it. thank you yeah <laughs> um but so he's from ethiopia is why his uh, book is still canonized in ethiopia so yeah so you guys can go check out all that and the way that he's describing it is what this next photo is is the all-seeing eye above the triangle so the way he describes the earth when he's outside of it is that it it is described like this that it's a firmament and then there's the abyss and then there's heaven so he's describing that it's like detached and that what's going to happen is the heaven is being put back on top of the earth and this is why they worship uh, the symbol like this uh, the new world order it says right here in latin you know because they've removed the head uh, and now the abyss is pouring in hmm. so that's just it popped into my mind as i was reading it you know it was something that i had seen that was being described very cool and yeah i'll never look at it the same thanks a lot todd way to expand our horizons buddy <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, uh, you're very welcome. Uh, that's what I'm here for, right? Expanding realities. Expand that shit. <laughs> uh, so then we got the end times prophecy, which is uh, very interesting. So I'll do a little bit about this. So the entire chap, the entirety of chapter one is about end times prophecies, and most of the Bible end time prophecies come from what's being said and the way Christianity describes you going to heaven or hell only happens once at the end times. There's for now everybody dies and goes to the same place but then there's going to be a great separation at one time where everyone's going to be separated into and it's not hell that you there's a burning place this is how it's described in enoch but to me it's just that they're not going to really exist any longer it's like in dodgeball you know when you get hit in dodgeball and you have to go sit out until everybody (laughs) gets hit and it's kind yeah. of like, you know, that's what this is. So if you get out of the game early, that sucks, dude. You got to wait till the game's over and then everybody can, can clear on Well, out see, the thing is everyone early. gets to reincarnate to try again to, to make it to the other side. That's right. That's right. There you go. I like it. Okay. So it's just dodgeball, guys. Yeah, just dodgeball. Uh, so the entirety of chapter 10 and chapter 5, 4 through 9 is all describing the end times prophecy. So I'll uh, read a little bit of it. So you got Enoch 25, 3 to 5. And he answered saying, this high mountain which they all has seen, whose summit is like the throne of God, is his throne, where the holy great one, the Lord of glory, the eternal king will sit 
when he shall come down to visit the earth with goodness. And as for the fragrant tree, no mortal is permitted to touch it till the great judgment, when he shall take vengeance on all and bring everything to its consummation forever. It shall then be given to the righteous and holy. Its fruit shall be for food to the elect. It shall be transplanted to the holy place, to the temple of the Lord, the eternal king. Now this is just saying that there's going to be a time where he, the Holy Great One, the Lord of Glory, the Eternal King, he's talking about Jesus, but Jesus wasn't named at this time yet. So he's saying he's going to come down and he's going to hold judgment over everybody. Uh, so there's a prophecy the, about Jesus? Yeah, without using his name. Yeah, that's what all the all of these terms are all about Jesus. These are all used for Jesus today, and it's not because Christians are familiar with the Book of Enoch because it's not in the Bible. So when we have those two distinct things happening separately but equally you know then to me one plus one equals two so that if this these people are saying it that read this and then these people are saying it that did this then you know that to me that's a link of proof as i was saying earlier with the howdy mccoskey you let the things fall away that don't uh that become false when you start connecting the dots of things that you can see equal people who have no connection are making. Yeah, I love that. I say that all the time. You, you know what you're not by knowing what you don't agree with, by what you right. disagree with. Right. Uh, so, and a lot of people say that the Book of Enoch was influenced by Greek writers and Hebrew writers and, and Christian writers. And it's like, well, maybe they were all just broken up and separated. Maybe at one time it was all the same thing, and now you're trying to separate it by saying, oh, this is only this, and this is only influenced by this, because the author of the Book of Enoch that I read he makes notes in it and says at different times, oh, well, this must have been when he was, you know, something, blah, 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 Hebrew writers, blah, 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 Greek writers, and it's like, oh, you're the one making that determination that and you're only doing that because you think that they're separate whereas you know they probably weren't do you think that there's been ever one unifying religion on this planet one unifying oh, understanding yeah. that was actually accurate and then over time maybe due to a cataclysm and people get separated and so then they form their own little pockets of ideology which of course is probably motivated and control and most of the most of the time. And so that's how yeah. you end up in the situation we have now to where everybody's trying to find that truth that we used to know inherently. And then it's just kind of like this en entropy that happens, right? Yeah. So when I was studying ancient civilizations in North America, the ancient native uh, indigenous people, they all had the entire country. They all had one religion, even though they were separated. And as I'm learning with all the new stuff that I'm finding is that they probably the natives were probably the more people who we call Tartaria, but it's just the North American version. They were called the Moors because this was Lemuria. And uh, they all, they knew Christ, you know, the way that the it's described in so many different places in Africa. You know, there's, there's always been that type of Christ consciousness uh, worshipped and known by, but what ends up happening is, which is why Jesus had to, God had to become Jesus, was because humanity taught God, as God had to learn, that humanity needed something to worship. It needed some kind of idol because it either idolized itself or it idolized somebody else. That there was something it had to look up to in order to know what its goal was. And once that's why God became flesh of Jesus and said, this, this is your God. This is the one I want you all to become. Because as, I, uh, as I've told people before, that all of consciousness was a big formless cloud. And when Jesus was uh, died on the cross, it snapped and it changed into the image of Jesus and, there, and said, this is your idol. This is who you worship now. And worship as in, this is who you strive to become, that you're not supposed to have idols, you're supposed to do the thing, because what's another word for idol is staying still. If you're just watching something, staying still, thinking you're going to be saved, instead of being actionable, then that's the difference. And, you know, so just because someone's a Christian doesn't mean that they're saved, uh, and just because someone's not a Christian doesn't mean they won't be saved. It has nothing to do with the religion of Christianity. It has to do with not staying idle with 
uh, being content with just thinking one one thing. You have to actively be a, a great person. Don't be a cunt. I love it. Yeah, what about, exactly. um, so do you think that God created us or do you think that something God created created us? Yeah, I think something God created created us. So then when God created Jesus to step in, that was directly God to kind of fix the mess of what his creation created? Right. So the way that I like describing this, it, I just saw this a couple of weeks ago on meditation. So this is the first time I'm getting to tell somebody. Hot is that it, yeah. So it was like uh, God was playing a board game with all of his kids. So imagine a father and a bunch of his children all sitting around playing a board game. And God, you know, they all have their own people. They've all created their own people. And God's like, I'm going to create my people. And boom, they were the Israelites. And God's like, I bet you, you know, they all have their mansions and all like this is Monopoly. They all have their their, uh, mansions and money and and all that. And God's like, I bet you I'll still win the game and created Adam and Eve when there were already many other beings here that were created by God's children. And then what ends up happening is the Israelites start becoming everything. And now we're all Israelites. All of humanity has nothing to do with a location on earth. It has nothing to do with a religion. It has to do with humanity as there's actual humans. And then there's those who are pretending to be humans who look human, but aren't human. And what's happening is the humans are going to win. So that's how I I've seen is that, yeah, God created us in a world that already existed with many other beings. And then God came down himself in order to become Jesus in order to show everybody, show all the Israelites of the world, this is what you should be doing. And in your analogy, it, it just made me think of like God playing, you know, some forgettable board game one rainy afternoon with his crappy kids, you know, and they just kind of mold things out of clay, right? So God like brought the board out and he created the rules and the board, but then they could create the entities which interacted on that board. Basically, to stick with the analogy, like you give them all a bunch of Play-Doh, they kind of create something. And then God was like uh, looking at one of his kids like, damn, you created humanity. That's pretty dope. I like that a lot. I'm going to create the Israelites, which is your thing, but look like better, right? And then it's going to run around and show you how to really make shit happen. And it's just interesting that it's kind of reduced to that, but it's a great analogy. I think that to that's a great analogy to present this type of information because when a lot of people hear information like this, it's some far off thing that's very hard to wrap their mind around. It automatically goes aliens guilty uh, or, you know, it it's just some far off thing. But the way that you're putting that, man, that's a great analogy for this. But it is also interesting that um, God had to step in and say, hang on, what you created was kind of fucked. Um, I need to fix this thing instead of just like, I don't know, time traveling or something. Almost <laughs> like the game is still going on, right? Like they're still playing that shitty board game or whatever on that rainy afternoon uh, in God's house. And there's nothing else to do. And it seems like the game is continuing and it's still going on. And maybe the end of the game is like our version of a rapture. That's when all the shit goes tits up down here. What do you, is there anything to that maybe? So, well, I think the rapture has already occurred uh, a few hundred years ago. (laughs) Okay. What are we doing here then? So I think that, you know, the Mayans are missing and there's several uh, civilizations around the world. They went to the outside of the flat earth. Everybody knows that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah every, all these civilizations, <laughs> they just up and then disappeared. Aztecs, they bounced, yeah. And, and San Francisco, it's weird that there is a certain section of San Francisco that there's no grave markers before the year 1850. And they say that there was this whole city was made in, you know, in that time. And it's like, well, if there's no dead people. You know, where'd they all go? I think that they were all raptured away. And I think that we are maybe... It's possible that we're the remnants of beings who had had to come back to give, be given the choice of following Christ or not. And, you know, that we were all evenly or equally given the decision to free willy, free willy. It's a great to, movie. <laughs> Good pull. To freely choose uh, whether we wanted to. I, and I don't know that I subscribe to that, but I do think that the uh, the rapture. I really do think that that occurred in the late 1700s and ended in like the 18 around the 1800s, and then Satan or Lucifer came down in the Carrington event of 1859, and everything oh, has been such confusion since that point because 
they couldn't have all of us figuring out uh, what was going on because once we did that, then they were fucked and uh, that they would be no more. So they had to do everything that they could in order to stay here. The The fallen angels had to become physical and, uh, you know, I think that all the giants that were on Earth started dying off for what they thought was no apparent reason in the 1700s and that their children who they bastardized with humanity uh, that they are now the ones who are in charge and they covered up all their ancestors being dead, uh, being giants and covered all of that up because then we would figure stuff out. So I think that we're in a post rapture world and this is the, the final judgment is about to occur. God damn dude. Holy the great, shit. And you're familiar with the great deception, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, I, that's that's the aliens. That's what yes. a lot of conspiracy theorists call Project Bluebeam. Absolutely, and and that's with, um, uh, that's when aliens, quote unquote aliens, which are just creations of fallen angels or fallen angels themselves, are going to come down here and say, "Come on, come to another planet. We're ascending," and that's the great deception. They're going to uh, try to enslave you in another planet. That we're not actually going anywhere. That we're going to be here and when beings come to tell us that that it's not going to be a true thing that we'll all know when god is here god and his angels we won't have to go anywhere god will if god wanted to god would strip us of our physical bodies and take us to heaven you know rapture us all at once or just somehow send a solar flash and and kill all of us at once kill all the flesh and we would still be here, but we don't have to go anywhere. And when that happens, that is part of the great deception by Quetzalcoatl, Q, uh, you know, that type of uh, deception. Do you think Q stands for Quetzalcoatl? I have recently come to understand that. Yes, it's Quetzalcoatl. Wouldn't has Q a, horseshit? Yeah, exactly. It's uh, the great deception, though. So uh, what they ha ha gotcha. So they come and the, they come in the name of peace. Right, and by doing good, by uh, cleaning up the the ills of the world, but they actually then have you sacrifice yourselves to them. If you're familiar with Quetzalcoatl, he has all the same attributes as Jesus for a while, except he's the feathered serpent. He's instead of being half human, he so whereas Jesus is half human, half God, Quetzalcoatl's half serpent uh, angel and half human. So. Uh, that and Quetzalcoatl beginning with a Q and it's the great deception, you know, it, it, it lines up. And what it, he ended up doing was he told the native people to expect Cortez and the Spanish Inquisition. He said, there, there's these white gods coming on this specific date. They showed up and that's how they were so easily conquered is because this God told them that other gods are coming. Right. And that's how all that happened it was the great deception for the native americans and we're from america so we would now be called native american being this deceived by q you know it all it all kind of fits god damn todd i think you nailed it on this one dude that's so yeah, badass because it is it's the ultimate fuck you it's the ultimate man and this is why i was talking about about the bible and about it being scripturally based that the god in the bible is actually satan so like and it's the same thing i've been saying forever that everything externally that's trying to get your attention in any fear-based way is fucking wrong it's an inversion of actual reality it's the great deception you trip my mind out about the fact that the rapture has already happened though it makes sense uh, the more i think about it though with the tatarian thing with the idea that these past cataclysms could have just been uh like fucking the rapture and it just happened and it's over now and then that's just the way that this works and there you go uh it's it's fascinating man um your perspective on this is incredible dude i i dig it i dig it a lot so Thank do, you, you. do you so do you think that the end times is now I think that the, yeah, I, I do think that the judgment is coming uh, soon. And, you know, to go with what I was saying with the solar flash, that's not just something I pulled randomly out of uh, nothing. Uh, we're in a solar minimum. And a lot of my psychic information, uh, as well as I talk to Christopher, the astro medium, he also has gotten this, that there's going to be a solar flash in the, this decade that is going to kill the planet 
uh, will think it would kill the planet, but what it's going to do, it's going to kill all of the material world, all of flesh, and we're all going to die simultaneously. Uh, but what's going to happen because we all die simultaneously, we'll still be living on in the astral world. So we won't actually die. It will be like everything just falls down where maybe... Uh, melts or something I, I don't know how it looks but that we'll all just be in the other world this is kind of the um idea of uh what the fuck was that it's that um uh, you know that melt away thing that just the poof and you're gone you know just the transition deal that that's like what happened to enoch exactly yeah I don't, I'm, I mean, it's fascinating to me, dude. And especially because like, if this is end times rapture, or that it's already happened and the earth is still continuing to continue. It's just odd, you know, that people would like still be having babies and shit here. It'd be like, you would think that the world would just go through what it went through. But I guess it makes sense from a rapture perspective, because we would just continue on down here to keep having babies on this place. But what's interesting is like the new souls coming in here then after the rapture happened, did they all get a fair shot, you know, and then get to go up? Or so whatever? I don't. OK, so this is where it brings me back to. I think that when the angels, the stars fall down here, that there are many different beings so that each piece of them is being born on here uh, now to accept. And that's why they keep being born is that they're getting the chance to accept something greater than themselves uh as god rather than you know have themselves be called god and uh i think that there is uh, i'm fairly certain that uh are you familiar with uh the great race that the nazis talked about yeah yeah okay so i'm fairly certain that they were created they were test tube babies incubator babies that were created and presented in, in the world's fairs as the you know when they had all these children and i forget exactly what they're called but they're incubators there's uh like children just there in incubators at these world's fairs and i think they were the test tube babies that they were created from nothing essentially that they're the great race and maybe that's why they call that generation the greatest generation because they were so obedient because they just worked hard and did put their head down and did what they were told. And that's why it's quote unquote, the great generation, their greatest generation, because they were the quote unquote, great race, because they were so obedient to the people who made them. Yeah. They were most subservient. Yeah. Damn, man. It's the Anunnaki thing all over again. They, you know, bred us uh, in the Inky, right? They bred us to make uh, human beings so that they could mine gold for their planet because they were sent here to do it and they're shitheads and they built us to do it because they were lazy is kind of the idea, right? Something uh, it, to that effect. It's fascinating, Todd, dude. This is awesome, man. Uh, this has been great. Uh, we're probably going to cap it on this one, dude, but uh, do you have anything else you wanted to close out on? And we'll look forward to doing this again, man. I have so many more questions for you, dude. Uh, no. So, I mean, if anyone, you know, I just gave like a, a pretty much a, a brief thing here, but if you guys really want to go in depth on it, you know, my YouTube uh, channel, Goodness Over Darkness, I have a three-part series. And even in that three-part series, I only include 84 slides and I have like 170 slides. So... I mean, there's so much to it. Well, the research you do is awesome. And the in-depth analysis you do is very insightful, man. You've got, you've just got a great handle on this and great uh, perception of it. Like you really do. You, you really go oh, all Thank out, you man. so much. So of course, all the ways this is going to be find you uh, down in the show notes, guys, go check out his YouTube for sure. Uh, you do a great show. You do great work, man. Come back anytime. You have an open invite. Of course, uh, if the you know final judgment doesn't happen, we'll get you scheduled back here pretty soon, buddy. I greatly appreciate it. And I do want to let the audience know that on my website, I do energy work and I have mentorship programs for anyone who's struggling with uh, what we tend to throw around as ascension types of symptoms or issues that are going on. I am a very powerful meditator and I can help guide you to what practical information i'm not going to just you know magically cure you of things i will help release things and i'll give you practical information so you can keep those things gone from your life and you no longer need to think that you need to keep coming back to me or keep coming back to anyone i'll help you become the the person that you were supposed to become boom pal the ultimate abundance model. I love it. I'll teach you how to not need me. That's great. That's right. Uh, dude, Todd, you're a badass, man. I really enjoyed this, and we look forward to seeing you again, brother. All right. Thanks, man. I appreciate it, and thank you all for listening. 
The always awesome Todd Armstrong. I want to thank Todd uh, for coming on the show and just destroying our perceptions of everything we knew about the Book of Enoch. And uh, he does an awesome job, guys. So go down there and check the show notes for all the ways to find him and, uh, you know, dig a little bit deeper into the research that he's been doing. So it's fascinating, man. Uh, he does a great job and real, real cool dude to boot. So it just works out. Uh, so this music that you're hearing, guys, a great friend of mine, Vinny the Saint, he is linked down in the show notes as well. Go check his stuff out. Make some awesome music, and we feature it here on the show because he's badass. I mean, and, and just a real cool dude too. So um, also down in the show notes is how to find us. If you want to expand your uh, experience of this show, then our show notes, uh, Rockfin, where our premium content and some other stuff are. Um, shirts and stuff are linked down there as well. If you want to rep the rep the logo there, uh, that'd be cool. And we've got some other designs up there by a good friend of mine, Nick, as well. And he is also linked in these show notes. So y'all go check him out. Makes some really cool shit. Uh, okay, go out into this beautiful planet, whatever the hell this place is, and just be nice to everybody that you come across. Pick up a piece of litter of... Of course, uh, get the hell out of the left-hand lane because that's a huge pain in the ass. Buy somebody a coffee or a meal or a bottle of water or something super simple from your perspective. It makes a massive difference for everybody else. Uh, Also, guys, just above and beyond everything else, whatever the hell that's going on out here in this crazy place, uh, y'all just be good to one another. That's it. Y'all just go out there and be good to one another. Uh, Thank y'all so much for listening. We will see you next time.